it comes to winning college football games, very few coaches in the history of college football have done it better or more often than Tennessee's Philip Fulmer. In just his seventh season as head coach at Tennessee, Fulmer's 1998 team won the national championship. He also ranks number one in the nation for the best one-loss record among active college coaches. And his 86% winning percentage is one of the best ever in NCAA history. Philip Fulmer's roots at Tennessee run very deep indeed. He was an offensive guard at the school from 1969 through 1971, helping the Vols to a 30-5 record. It's a line of scrimmage, whether it be a run or a pass. Uh, the term skill position really bothers me sometimes because you're talking about those guys out there that can run fast or throw and catch and do those things. To me, the most skilled people in the, in the, in the, on the offensive team or maybe on the football team in general have to be the offensive line. Uh, you have to be the toughest guy on the field. You have to be the smartest guy on the field. You have to take your strengths and maximize those and certainly learn to minimize your weaknesses and be the hardest workers on the field. There's fundamentals and techniques uh, that have to go into every play, and there's lots of ways, lots of ways to skin a cat when you're trying to block a defense or block a particular person. And the more you do those kind of things, the more successful you're going uh, to be. But in my opinion, the whole football team and the whole scheme of things depends on the success of the offensive line. Those are some of the general philosophies that, I've, that I think here at the University of Tennessee. Jarvis Rito, who was an outstanding player for us uh, for three years, a starter and an, on our national championship team. Mercedes Hamilton, also a starter on our national championship team and one of our captains. Uh, David Douglas. David played for us uh, several years ago, played six years of, of, of pro football. Appreciate him. And Brad Lampley this morning is helping us also, was an outstanding player for us and is now a graduate assistant for us. With any athletic event that you attempt to do, it's very important to have the, the very beginning of the basics. In football, it's the stance. We have a uh, demonstration here this morning. Both of these young men are right-handed guys. We uh, use the a line on the field, coaches, and I think that's very important to, to be a, a landmark for us so that we can look and see the stagger that they actually have. We want to try to be as uniform as we possibly can. As these two young men go ahead and get down, you'll see that they're going to have a good shoulder width stance, both of them with their hand out above their shoulder pad, not under their helmet, on their right side of their body in this case, a left-hander would be just the opposite. You can see that both of them have their toes in, heels out, backs flat, head up. We want to be able to see everything that we possibly can in front uh, of us so that we can see what the defense is doing. Some young men will prefer to drop maybe the right foot back even further, not necessarily out, but back further. Uh, and uh, to, to maintain that balance. And we want to be able, okay, we want to be able to have a stance that we're able to get out of, to run, block right, block left, and certainly be able to come back and pass pro. Obviously getting warmed up in football is very important. We've already been through our normal flex exercises and have come to an individual time here with the offensive line. We want to really work again on the line as, as much as we possibly can so I can see their stance, I can see their first step. All right, guys, we're going to go first sound. First sound. Here we go. go. Obviously, what we're working on here is getting ourselves loosened up. The guys are about half speed. We're still working on our stance, working on our takeoff with our right foot. Go. The guys are getting themselves good and loose and getting ready for an outstanding practice. And left foot this time, gentlemen. Here we go. Go. I'm interested in their start, their takeoff, their body position, their look, how they're going to look on contact. Go. Okay. And also getting them good and loosened up as we go. All right, this is our two-step explosion drill. The guys are going to work the stance again. Here we go, guys. First sound. 
All we're going to go is one, two, and explode and see how much, what kind of punch we can get. First sound. Go. Good. You see both of them take short first step back again. Here we go. Back again. First sound. Both of them take great first steps and they bring their hands in a hurry. Go. Good. And one. To me, this is the most fundamental of all blocks that we have as an offensive lineman. Base block, driving five yards, finishing a perfect hit. First sound. Here we go. Go. See, it. get good footwork, good leg drive, good body position, fan. Good. So keeping all of our fundamentals of our stance and our start, our explosion and leg drive, we want to finish the block. This is called the finish drill. First sound. Go. Finish, 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 finish. Good. That boy, good. Her back. Down the field, finish the block. Those little defenders don't always cooperate. They want to run from you, and it's important that an offensive lineman has great feet and a great will to finish the block. Same fundamentals of a stance and start, explosion, leg drive, and then we're going to finish. First sound. Go! Push, 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 push. Finish, 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 finish. Good. That way, David. Good. One of the absolute keys for an offensive lineman is to stay low. We can do the same drills that you just saw on tape, and we add the shoot to it. This happens to be a little bit taller because we have a number of tall guys. But you can make this in the, in the shop at the school at any height that you would like for it to be and use it for any number of things. It can be for a, a, an option team or a beer team where you're really staying low. Obviously, you'd make the shoot lower if you're a... Uh, more of an I team, it might be higher as we have it here. We're going to demonstrate just some of the same drills that we did, but under the chute. Here we go. Driving all the way through. First sound. Here we go. Go. Bam. Right there. Good leg drive. Good body position. Good base. Great. Good job. One of the things you're going to be noticing about all these guys is they have all the power angles together and their feet and their knees and their butts down and their shoulders up. But every one of them have used their hands extremely well. The hands are a great weapon, a great part of what we try to teach here at Tennessee, and not as a whole. Now, you want, do not want to get it out of the framework of the body, but if we took this bag away and we just fit perfectly into the, into the defender right there, first we're head, then we're hands, and we're following, and we're going to push with our butt, our legs, and our hands to finish any block that we make. We're going to work on the, on the different types of pulls that we use here. We're going to pull right, guys. First sound. Here we go. Here we go. You see both of them beginning the great stances. Go. All right. Good. Both of them are working the sweep pull. We want to open our hips. We want to open our foot. Open, pull ourselves around as David did right there. Get ourselves turned, working to lead the sweep. Here we go. First sound. Two of you together. Going right. Go. Right there, all in one motion, no false steps, getting ourselves up the field and turn as quickly as we can. Going left, go! No false steps, getting our feet open, getting ourselves turning up the field. Ideally, we are completely opening our hip and gaining and losing ground at the same time. Great gaining ground toward the play and losing ground on the line of scrimmage and then able to turn and run. Many times we'll be responsible for a linebacker, so this time we're going to, oh, you go close together. We're going to pull and keep our shoulders square to the line of scrimmage in case our linebacker is shallow and is going to run through on us. Here we go. First sound. One right. Go. Right there, shoulders a little bit more square than, than Jarvis had right there. A little bit more square facing that linebacker that might run through on us. First sound. Go. Eyes on that linebacker, shoulders square. Good. Now we're going to pull in trap. This can be the short trap, or it can be the counter trap. We're going to pull right, keep our shoulders square to the defender that we're getting ready to trap. First sound. Here we go. Go! Alright, good. We're going left, guys. Just like any other trap situation, if we can't kick him out, we're going to log him. We're going to make something happen with a guy. Go! Good. Right there, alright? Good. We 
we've been through uh, quite a bit of practice at this point and gotten ourselves good and warmed up and our first full speed step is usually down the line drill. I want to show this to you from behind because it's very important that you see the steps and the landmarks. The same principles, here we go guys, same principles of the toes on the line, the same short first step and we're looking for landmarks. Base block, first sound, here we go, about in five yards. Go! Hit and drive, hit and drive, hit and drive, good, hurry back, those guys will give them a good fit. Our first live work of the day, here we go, we're going to go first sound, they go right foot, base block, first sound, go, bam, right there again, you see both of them trying to use their hands, rolling their hips, getting a good base block. We're going to work uh, now the offset of the, of the defender, we certainly can't dictate where they're going to line up, we've got to be able to block them anywhere they line up, same stance, same starts, working for an outside landmark, first sound, here we go, one of the one of the very important things about this, that's very good, Jarvis, same block to the left. One of the very important things is you have great actors by, uh, by the defensive people. First sound. Here we go. Go. Good, good, good. Way to follow your hands and feet. Good. That'll boy, hurry back. You notice me saying hurry back each time. One of the things that's very important to me is tempo in practice and the guys understanding what you're expecting as a, as a coach. And practice actually becomes easier as you go through and you get them conditioned for what you expect early in practice all the way through teamwork at the end of practice. We're going to continue going through all the blocks that the kids might have during the course of the game. We just had the stretch block, now we've got the down block. Same stance, good first step across that line, first sound. Go! Blocking down to Penny. All right, good. You see David really did a good job of getting his butt around, going back the other side to the right. There we go. He may be the right tackle one week and the left tackle the next, or so on and so because we're going to put our best players in the game. First sound. Go! Blocking down to finish. Good. Good job, David. You know, still on the line, and like one good thing I like about this drill is you can use five at a time and get a lot of tempo and a lot of guys working, but now we're going to work on the draw block. We move the guys to their heels up on the line where their toes have been on the line. Now we just want to get a pass rush set, a pass set, and a pass rush out of the defender. Here we go. First sound. Go! Good set, good movement, working him out and wide, out and wide. Still in the down the line series of uh, all the blocks that you might have. This is called a reverse block that we use quite a bit. First sound. Go! Step, angle, push. All right, good. Centers use this a lot on counter block when they're blocking back. We can use it on any of our option series. Here we go. First sound. Go! Right foot lead. Good, 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 good. Right back. We've gotten through most of the individual blocks that the kids might have during the course of the game, and obviously in the offensive line, you've got to be able to combo block. Here we're setting up what we call a pop and turn drill with a free technique, and the guard and tackle work into the backside linebacker. It could be the center and guard, it could be the tackle and tight end. Here we go, first sound. Combination block. Go! Good, we eat the down man, and we search out the backside linebacker. That's not bad for either one of those guys. First sound, inside steps by both young men are going to push the down man as long as they can. Go! Push the down man and search the linebacker. Good. Both of them are looking for that backside linebacker and they're looking for moves. Still staying in the framework of the combination blocks, we often will block down as you saw in the individual drill and pull the onside guard for the linebacker. Here we go. First sound, great first step, great finish by the, by the offensive guard. Going to the right. Go! Ben, good, good, good with Mercedes keeping his shoulders square and finishing up what we're getting done there. Staying within the combination blocks that we have, obviously one of the things that we've had good success with is the trap and the counter trap. These two young men are going to block back and we're going to trap the uh, onside defender. Here we go, first down. Go! Good, good, working inside out, trying to get the inside out position and finishing. Hurry right back, once more. We'll flip it over and we'll let Jarvis pull and trap. Here we go, first sound. Go! Good, good, trapping inside out. Good job. See, I think most of the time the most important block are the backside blocks that we get done. Jarvis will demonstrate it here, trying to get to the, to the inside leg and scramble and getting up the field. Not worrying about much about movement, but we're worried about getting in between him and the, and the uh, ball carrier. Here we go, first sound. He's going to shoe shine. Go! Right there, right there, working himself up the field. Just a scramble block, get inside. We've all done it for 100 years. And whatever offense we have, we've got to cut off the backside defender. Obviously, the ball's going this way. 
If we were to get some kind of outside movement, then he's going to work strictly. I'll be the back side linebacker. He'll just work to the next level. Here we go, first down, work himself up and search out the backside defender. He's got an area here. Go right in there. He's going to work out and find something to do, find work downfield. That's what we call a shoe shine block. And now we're going to work what we call a fish hook block. It'd be a slow hitting play backside, and all Jarvis wants to do is make sure he works for high, hard body position. Here we go. First sound. Going to have a great takeoff again on the inside foot. Finish the block. Go. Good. Working ourselves up the field to make sure we try to stay inside out. Movement is not as imperative as, uh, as making sure body position is maintained. Now we're going to work a uh, backside combination block. We call this a slip. We can work a tight slip or a wide slip. And we go a combination of blocking three and a backside linebacker. The play's obviously going to the left here. Here we go. First thing. Go. Two guys working together to push the down man, working themselves to the backside linebacker. Good. See, all these cases, they've got the great base, the great leg drive, and the great finish each time. If we've got movement, if we've got a three go to a one, the tackle becomes responsible for the linebacker to line up in the three and go to the one. Guard ends up with a down man. Here we go. First sound. Toes on the line again. Here we go. Go. Good. Guard ends up. Tackle works himself to the linebacker. This can be a backside block. Same principle as a zone block on side. Stay in the framework of backside blocks. This is what we call a rub block. We wanted to stop the defender from getting to the play, obviously, and work to the second level linebacker. Jarvis will be the point man and and uh, Mercedes going to be the rough guy. Here we go. First sound. Go. Push, push, push. Working ourselves off to the backside linebacker. Mercedes could give him a little bit more help. That's why you're looking at him, right, Jarvis? Huh? <laughs> a little bit more help as we push through the down man. Just play straight here. Just play straight. Here we go. Four technique. Here we go. First sound. Here we go. Go. Good. Atta boy. Well done, well done, well done. Good job. This is our linebacker cut drill. Mercedes is getting ready to go to pro camp here in a couple of weeks, and I'm not going to ask him to uh, get himself all bruised and banged up, but this is a really important block for us. Uh, same thing as we start always with his toes on the line. He wants these, these bags represent defenders that he'll have to take. And you're not going to get the perfect fit of the block all the time. And the tremendous effort, the tremendous commitment to, to finish the block and the pride that the group takes together and bonding together to be the best group on the field is very, very important. And once you get that established, some of the pass pro uh, drills that we do, we got through most of our run stuff, and, and obviously you've got to be able to throw the football and you've got to be able to protect the quarterback uh, at Tennessee. We use a lot of pre-shift stance. In other words, we allow our kids to stay up. Again, we use the line, our toes in, the heels out as much as we possibly can. I use the line to see the stagger. Also, it allows me to see their first set. As Mercedes, we're going to take a set here to his right, with his right foot with an outside shade, though. Okay, I would see that toe and heel move and actually know that he's moved three or four inches and got himself in a good body position. Go ahead back again, Mercedes. If he is setting, and whether it's from a down position or up position, and that foot were to go up with an outside set, I know that he's got himself in trouble. If he's moved it and he's gotten himself back, moving back in here, Mercedes, back in here somewhere, I know that he's being soft because he's well off of the line that we're using as a landmark for us. Many kids can't or won't until they actually practice it, follow their first set with their second set. I want the left foot to do the same thing that the right foot's doing. And as he goes, first sound, go. As he moves, he moves both feet. He gets himself in a position to ready himself. Obviously, in our case, our hands will be up. Depending on your rules in high school or junior high, how you'll be able to use your hands. But it's not really the hands as much, I think, as, as we want to maintain those toes in, heels out, the body position that he gets himself in to be able to pass pro. It's a good butt down, shoulders back as much as we can. He's in a movable position here, able to move right or left as he needs to and he wants to move with a defender. He also wants to use his hands to keep the, keep the framework of the body of the defender and, and pull him back, if you will. We can't grasp cross or certainly get cloth, certainly get outside the framework, but we want to be able to keep the framework of the defender inside uh, our framework. 
Run the set position with the heels on the line. I'm going to give Jarvis a set from pre-shift position. Also, he can do it from a down position. And what we're working at right here is pass weight. He doesn't want to give much ground as he go. He doesn't want to click or cross. Here we go. First down. Go! We've got a good set. Now we're going to work right. We're going to work left. Want to work right and want to work left. Good. Just the principles of making sure that our framework stays in the framework of the defender. We want to make sure that we try to keep the defender on the line of scrimmage as much as we can, but oftentimes he'll take an outside or an inside route that we've got intersecting. This is to give ground a little bit. Same thought as a drill, the passway, but we're going to give ground. First set. Go. Here we go. He's going to work himself, work himself, and this is really to work him, make him open his hip. And I'd like for Jarvis to get his toes down the field just a little bit more. We don't, don't want to be duck footed. Come here, David. All right, he's going to do it from the down position. Here we go. Go. We're up, working. Here we go. Giving her ground, giving her ground as we need to, giving her ground as we need to, giving her ground as we need to. Good. I want to show this from behind because it's a mirror drill. It's very important that we just put together what we just did in, in, on air, basically. Now we're, it's on you, Brad. Here we go. First sound. Go. Mirror. All we're doing is working the mirror. All right, good right there. Not looking for a lot of contact, trying to make sure that we got the toes down the field and the great feet to stay in between. We can do it with hands, no hands. We're going to stay in the work, staying in between as much as we can. Give some ground each time, toes down the field. All right, good. Good, Brad. This is what we call a quick set drill, which is all we're trying to do is get our position so that we can punch and use our hands. Here we go, first time, straight rush. Go! Bam, right there, get those hands inside where you want them to be. Again, I can do four or five linemen at the same time against four or five scout defenders. You can see Mercedes is going to make sure that his set is over and back to the left to get that inside position on the uh, defender. First set, go! Bam, right there, the guy's coming to him and sprees. I can, I can look and tell how much ground he's given because I've used, him, used that landmark of the offensive line right there. He's given a pretty good bit of ground. I'd like him to be maybe a little bit firmer than that as he goes from a hill on the line to a toe on the line. The wider the defender is, obviously the further off the line that he'll have to be. Now we're going to get into a little bit of contact, okay? We've got the guy setting good out of the stances, okay? We're going to get into a little bit of contact with one hit. All I want the defender to do is take one, one side, and David don't want to be too aggressive like that. We want to make sure that we get ourselves in a good pass pro position and manage the first move that the defender might have. Here we go. One hit. Here we go. That way. Here we go. First hand. Go. Good. Right there. Good. Working. Oh, boy. One hit, one move. All right. Here we go. I'm over here instructing off of what the defender's best move might be that we're getting ready to play. I'm instructing a rip or a swim on the one move. Here we go. First hand. Go. Good swim action. David's working himself inside out. Now, boy, not bad. Most defenders are going to give you more than one move, and now we're going to work on defending against two moves, one way or the other. Jarvis is on offense. Mercedes is on defense. Give me that, that way, and then that, this way. Here we go. First sound. Jarvis got a hit and react. This is as real as it gets before you scrimmage or play. First sound. Go! Great move, great move right there. He stopped the swim with the first set. He reacted to the spin move. All right, you two flip it over. And we can work four or five guys at a time here, spread them out a little bit, getting great video work from behind. Good set, good reaction. Right here, stop the rip on the first move, stop the spin on the second move, okay? One more time, I'm going to really try to get over Mercedes here this time. Give me, give me that, okay, and that, this way, first thing. Here we go. First sound. Anything you can be creative to do or whatever the best pass rush that the defender has. Go. Right there. Good. There's a spin. you got to come back and react. Good. Good. Well done. Not bad. One of the things that we that you can do in the off-season program or at any time just to teach a kid to use his hand is just stand there as a coach or get the other guy catching catch me in by him. Right, is I'm going to fling, 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 fling. Okay. I'm working, I'm trying to get him to come forward, and I almost got it that time, <laughs> okay, but just teaching the kid to punch me back, okay? Staying in the framework of trying to move our feet and getting the timing is hard for a big guy sometimes, especially a young guy to time the, 
the timing of being able to contact a defender in pass pro and, and keep his feet working at the same time. And we use the medicine ball just to help that, just like the lean-in drill that we did. This is just uh, hand-eye coordination and getting the timing. Okay, now we can throw the, the medicine balls down. And we actually try to time it up versus a defender. You guys get a little bit closer, a little bit closer than that. Okay, and we'll start from your left, middle, and then right. All right, here we go. First sound. Go! Punch, punch, punch. Good. So now, I'm going to do the same thing as Jarvis, and we do, this is kind of where we go most of the time. You guys back away just a little bit, and I'm going to point to the defender. He doesn't know where he's going to come from. He's got to shuffle to the uh, defender that he's coming and again, working the body position and, and the punch. Here we go. First sound. Find your man. Go! Here we go. Back, here we go. Back, hurry back. Good, good. All right, very well done. And many times a kid wants to just hit and collapse his hand. We want to hit and rough him up a little bit, shake him down is what we call it, throw him away and then look for the next defender. Here we go, this is our shake him down drill. Here we go, first sound. Go! Here we go, shake him down, shake him down, throw him away. Shake him down, shake him down, throw him away. Good, good, working right there. Coaches, one of the things that I did that I thought was really good, this is, this is David demonstrating, and you see he's having some even difficulty. Now, I put gloves on a dummy. Not, not a real heavy dummy, but this makes him have to sit down. He can't stand up. He can't stand up and hold that dummy up. He's got to be able to sit down and get in a pass pro position, and this gets his hand extended to be able to do this, to hold this dummy. Now, we can do a wave drill from right here, any, any way you want to go, David. Here you go. So he can work right there, right and left as he wants to. Good. Good, that's good. But finding that position, finding that position is very, very important for the, for the offensive lineman that he is in, in perfect balance, that he can deliver the blow and have his hands out front and be able to stay down. Another way just trying to be creative in our drills is to try to find that perfect position and play from it. From past pros, we've taken a regular, this is almost like a broomstick. We've actually had these these made, and, and Brad's going to be on defense, so his hands are outside the widest. And Jarvis is going to be on offense, offense, and his hands are inside just like you want to be. He gets into a good pass pro position, and Brad is free to do anything with this stick that he wants to do. He can push him back, as a defender would try to do. If he pulled down right or left, it's like a defender trying to pull your shoulder pads down. He can pull him to him. And again, all we're trying to do is teach Jarvis to keep that centered position and react accordingly. If he pull down, he's going to restrict in any way that he possibly can. We'll demonstrate it here just real quick as we go. Your own defense, your own offense. Here we go. And we can move right or left here as we go. First thing. Go. Here we go. Jarvis is just control of his body and control of the stick. Good, that's well done. I really want to say a special thank you to these guys for helping me this morning and, and helping uh, make this tape for you. You know, playing in the offensive line takes an awful lot of pride and effort as we talked about. It takes a lot of skill too. And it took a lot of years and a lot of drills for these guys to perfect these things that you just watched on tape. And, it drives me crazy when I hear uh, people talk about skilled positions, and I think the offensive line, you have to be the most skilled, most disciplined position on the field.